Hi everyone. I wanted to share with you a simple Excel-based tool to conduct solvency stress tests for banks. We all know that stress tests can be helpful to simulate the impact of the pandemic. For example, a scenario which shows a decline of GDP and the impact on banks' capital ratios. This analysis can be helpful when it comes to the question, for example, when should we unwind or enhance any of the regulatory current relief measures. This Excel tool here, developed by Christian Schmieder, is based on former work with his colleague Hardy in 2013. And it uses the most aggregate rule of thumb established by Hardy and Schmieder, mapping GDP growth paths directly into credit loss paths. Uh, at home, you can now refine it using your rules of thumb paper for the key drivers of bank solvency, namely credit losses, including forbearance, pre-impairment income and credit growth, as well as risk-weighted assets. For now, regulators, supervisors and financial institutions can use the tool to simulate the medium to long-term impact of the crisis on financial institutions' balance sheets and business models. I think it's a quite useful tool, and now let Christian will explain you how the background of the study worked and will give you some advice on how to use the sheet. Thank you. Thank you very much, Roland. So, as Roland said, the rationale for the study was to come up with rules of thumb to stress test banks in a straightforward and yet meaningful way. During the great financial crisis, we were running stress tests at the IMF on a country-by-country -country, uh, basis. And the question that came up uh, f frequently is how specific countries did compared to others. More general, we were, generally, we were also looking at stress tests from a multilateral perspective to put stress tests into perspective. After running a very comprehensive study for more than 10,000 banks from all over the world covering 20 years of history with many banking crises, we came to the conclusion that there are such rules of thumb which characterize average circumstances faced by banks, including their behavior uh, during these crises for different levels of stress. So be it, for example, a crisis such as the Great Financial Crisis, but also less severe crises which happen more frequently. Importantly, we also found that there are differences between advanced economies and emerging market economies, which are reflected in the calibration. What Roland and I will present to you shortly is the rule of thumb that links GDP paths directly to banks' capital ratios. As Roland has said, this is the simplest rule developed by Daniel and I. Yet, we are comfortable that this rule provides you with a meaningful uh, insights on what levels of stress specific banks or banking systems might be exposed to in the coming years uh, uh, when the pandemic will unfold. What you will have to judge, and that's my advice to you, is how effective the public measures applied in your country are to reduce the impact that one would otherwise expect given the severity of the current recession. One way to look at this question is to use the rule of thumb based on the cumulative deviation of the GDP path from the pre-crisis trend, which is available in the tool, rather than the uh, rule that simulates uh, banks' capital ratios based on the drop of G GDP, which might be more severe. Last but not least, we simulated losses will be recognized with a lag of six months for advanced economies and by uh, one year for emerging market economies. So a lag of six months compared to the GDP path. And this is something that you will have to check um, and to evaluate whether this is something that you want to simulate or whether you want to change this lag, and it's fairly straightforward to do that in the tool. To arrive at more detailed insights on what might happen to specific banks and banking systems, I would encourage you to read the paper. And, uh, more importantly, to look at rules established for the core drivers of bank solvency, as pointed to by Roland. In the next steps, we'll walk you through the spreadsheet to provide you with guidance on how to use it. The main message is that you will see results within a few minutes, and that's what we can offer you. Thank you. 
Okay, so let us now look at the spreadsheet. The, the spreadsheet has four tabs. The most important one before you start is the README tab. I've co covered a lot of ground uh, on what is mentioned here, but uh, it would be good that you reread uh, what, what we give you, what information we give you. And then it has three more tabs. So the most important tab is stress test for everyone. This is the tab that will allow you to simulate capital ratios, and Roland will talk about that in a minute. And then there are two more tabs, and this is data from the IMF. One is the, GD, the real GDP growth. You see that there is uh, historical information starting from the 1980s and going uh, uh, leading up to projections until 2024. And this is the latest information as of October 2020. And then there are the capital ratios, and the, the last available capital ratios also from the IMF for a, a, a wide set of countries. Let me now hand it over to Roland to walk you through the, um, the spreadsheet at the main uh, tab. Thanks. Okay, guys, let me try to explain the sheet a little bit more in detail. You will find here the yellow cells where you can enter information or you have a drop-down list like here, for example, the country list. Then you have in the blue cells derived information based on your input in the yellow cell and everything what is written in red are the instructions, so you need to read these. So in this case we have chosen Austria. Let's move for example to Australia. We have chosen now Australia from the drop-down list. And as Christian mentioned before, the spreadsheet holds the data from that slide and, F and the capital ratios from these tabs here. So then you have a GDP pass which is based on the IMF forecast. So in this case of Australia, we have a drop of minus 4.2% in GDP and then we have a rebound, a strong recovery to 3%, plus 3% and then it continues until 2024. The color coding basically shows you the severity of the movement. And I've just inputted here a very simple scenario called double dip in which we have um, in 2020 um, a decline of 6.7% uh, and then a recovery of 3 and then it bounces back down to 0 and then it recovers by 2 and 2. I'm not sure if you can see this all on the sheet but when you when you um, try to, to do that uh, yourself, you will find it easy by selecting your own scenarios and defining your scenarios here. So now let's see um, how these kind of scenarios have been classified. We have here a little table which says MF, GDP Outlook, and our double dip scenario. And you can see here the like, elast elasticities um, which have been classified are severely adverse and uh, moderate and severely adverse. So that's where the sheet basically draws the GDP elasticities in terms for capital. Um, let's now see how capital has developed under this scenario. This is a MF global outlook based and you can see that uh, capital numbers come down from 13.1% to 12.6% and so on. And under the double dip scenario, uh, capital numbers are much lower here. Here, I'm going to show you this in a graph. You can see this here. The simulated capital ratios. You can see where we come from, 13.1%, and it goes down to 9.1% in the double dip on the IMF projection 12.2 and here you see a nice recovery but here this is going to be down so if we you have also one cell here where you can choose between standardized approach and the uh, internal rating based approach so this gives you of course different results as well you have another very important cell which is down here it's uh, the model of um, basically um, 
where you have cumulative deviation or maximum drop in GDP. So you have always this choice, either to choose maximum drop or cumulative deviation from GDP based on the GDP parts. I think that's it in a nutshell, and uh, I'm sure Christian maybe would like to add something I have forgotten. Christian. So thanks a lot, Roland. You've covered the ground. Um, the only thing I, that I would like to mention is what Roland just said. There is this uh, option to choose between two rules of thumb that Daniel and I have developed. So one is based on the maximum drop of GDP. So um, in the and this is a very sort of a, a very important uh, rule for this crisis because it's a very deep crisis, but followed by a very strong rebound. Um, and therefore, if you use this rule, you will probably overestimate um, the impact of the crisis. Also, given all the, the measures that are the public measures that are out there. So therefore, you might also consider the cumulative deviation of GDP from trend. So that measures the, the, uh, the sum of the, GD, the real GDP growth from 2020 to 2023 and compares that with uh, past crisis um, for uh, advanced economies and emerging markets. Uh, and then, as Roland said, based on these uh, trends, the scenarios get classified into three groups. Um, you see it uh, up here. So you have either moderate, adverse, or severely adverse. Uh, and that determines the elasticities which you see at all the way at the bottom of the sheet. So, uh, for example, in this case, um, we, are, we are now, and I scroll up so that you can see it, we are now talking about, let's choose maximum drop in GDP. Um, so here, the, uh, the IMF scenario projects in I. 57, a severely, a severely adverse um, scenario for the drop of GDP in historical terms, something that occurs every 50 years or has occurred every once in 50 years. Uh, and, and for that scenario, the elasticity for advanced economies for the IRB, that's cell F60, I'm, I'm clicking on that right now, is 0.81. So what does this mean? This means that for um, a maximum drop of GDP, that is one percentage point more, capital ratios would drop by another 0.81%. So if you have, for example, a drop of uh, GDP, let's say of 6%, then you would multiply uh, the 0.18 with 6. So you would have a drop of 4.8%. Um, and then if, if it's higher, then and you just uh, it would be a um, a linear proportional increase, but if you only have a drop, uh, let's say of three or four percent, then you would uh, remain in the adverse scenario. This is shown here in, in uh, column uh, G, uh, G21 to G25. So adverse scenarios on average have seen a drop uh, of GDP of 4.3 percent for advanced economies. So then you would be in that scenario, and for that scenario the elasticity shown um, in cell F59 uh, would be 0.7% uh, and of course a, a negative uh, sign because you have a drop. For the emerging markets you have uh, um, the elasticities uh, right next to the advanced economies in cell, in cell G both for the standardized approach and for the IRB. You see that for the, for the emerging markets the difference between the uh, emerging uh, standardized approach in the IRB is not that difficult, not that different, because the, simply the, the losses were substantial in both cases and the effect of risk-weighted assets is less. Let me stop here. Thank you. So thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for Christian to make this available to you. The coding is open so you can add uh, information, you can play around with it, you can adjust the way uh, the, the numbers, you can also see how neighboring countries um, perform. I think it's a very good ground to communicate amongst each other with the regulator, with the private industry. Thank you very much to all of you and I give Christian the last word. Thank you. So thank you very much to everyone. I hope uh, this will be useful for you. Um, just play with it as Roland says and um, 
And if you have any questions, um, uh, we are also there for you. Thanks. Bye.